Hello everyone, my name is Rahul. In the previous video, we had discussed about various enzymes that, that are used in biotechnology with special focus on the restriction endonucleases. In this video, we are going to discuss about cloning vector. So, any medium which is used to carry recombinant DNA is termed as a vector. Vector in literal terms means vehicle. So, any medium which may be an organism which is used to carry recombinant DNA is known as a vector. Now, mostly plasmids and bacteriophages, they act as vectors because they have the ability to replicate within bacterial cells independent of the control of chromosomal DNA. So, the DNA that is used to transfer a fragment DNA that is used to transfer a fragment of foreign DNA into a suitable host is called as is called as vector DNA and the medium by which this vector DNA will be transferred is it is called as a cloning vector. So plasmids and bacteriophages have the ability to replicate within bacterial cells independent of the control of chromosomal DNA. Now plasmids we have already discussed that these are circular single stranded extra chromosomal genetic material and bacteriophages are basically viruses that affect bacteria. So to act as a vector there are certain features that, that are required which include first of all origin of replication. Origin of replication is also known as ORI. It refers to a sequence. It refers to the sequence from where from where replication starts from where replication starts and any piece of DNA and any piece of DNA if linked to this sequence if linked to this sequence can replicate inside the cell inside the cell basically inside the host cell so there will be a sequence of nucleotides and if we insert our gene our gene of interest into this area this origin of replication area then this gene will be multiplied will be replicated inside the host cell not only this this origin of replication this sequence also controls the copy number also controls the copy number what does copy number means copy number refers to the number of copies of that particular dna that will be made inside the host cell so example if copy number is 100 then it means 100 copies 100 copies of this dna will be 
obtained from host cell the host cell into which this dna has been inserted it will generate 100 copies if the copy number is 100 so this origin of replication controls the copy number so if you want to recover many copies of the target dna we should use a vector whose ORA, ORI supports high copy number so if ORI supports a high copy number for example 1000 10000 then we can generate as many copies as we want so the vector is chosen based upon its copy number and our requirement if we require uh, if we require many copies we will use a vector which has a high copy number which whose origin of replication ORI allows a high copy number next we use a selectable marker there should be a selectable marker selectable marker it helps it helps in identifying it helps in identifying the transformants and eliminate and eliminate non transformants and eliminate non transformants so what is transformation transformation refers to the procedure through which through which recombinant DNA is introduced is introduced inside the host so the process of the process of introducing foreign DNA or recombinant DNA inside the host is known as transformation so for example if these are our host cells these are our host cells so when we will introduce the recombinant dna when we will introduce the recombinant dna there will be certain hosts that will take up this dna and there will be certain hosts that will not take up this dna so the blue ones the solid blue ones they have taken the recombinant DNA and the light ones they have not taken the foreign or recombinant DNA so we need a marker to identify which host cells have taken the recombinant DNA and which host cells have not taken up the DNA because right now we are only worried about these cells that have taken up the recombinant DNA because ultimately they will provide us the desired product so we need to identify which cells have taken up the recombinant DNA and which have not taken up the DNA. So this selectable marker, it helps in identifying the transformants that is those they have taken up the recombinant DNA and eliminate those that have not taken up the recombinant DNA which are known as non-transformants. So normally, normally genes encoding for genes encoding for antibiotic resistance antibiotic resistance are used as selectable markers such as ampicillin resistance genes and chloramphenicol tetracycline or canamycin these are all used in E. coli so these genes when present they will provide resistance to these particular antibiotics and we can use these genes as selectable markers because a transformant with ampicillin resistance will be able to grow 
in a medium where ampicillin is present and the non-transformant will not grow on this medium. So we can identify which is a transformant and which is not a transformant. So normal E. coli does not carry resistance against any of these antibiotics. When we introduce the plasmid, when we introduce that extra chromosomal DNA, it will acquire resistance against these antibiotics. So they can be used as a selectable marker. Sometimes enzyme forming genes, sometimes enzyme forming genes are also used as selectable markers. Also used as selectable markers. Example, lack Z gene of E. coli. Lack Z gene of E. coli. It is responsible for production of a particular enzyme and it can be used as a selectable marker. Now, the third requirement is the presence of restriction sites or cloning sites. So, in order to link the foreign DNA, the vector which we are using, it has to have restriction or cloning sites for commonly used restriction endonucleases. For example, eco R1, as we had already discussed, the sequence is this. This is the palindromic sequence, so it should be present inside the cloning vector so that our restriction enzyme can act. Now, the problem is if there are more than one restriction sites, then what have what will happen so for example this is the dna here also this site is present and here also this site is present so when i will apply my restriction enzyme what will happen is it will also cut here it will also cut here now i will have three fragments of dna but i only wanted two fragments so if there is restriction site, multiple restriction sites for the same enzyme, it causes fragmentation of DNA. So, multiple sites for one enzyme leads to fragmentation of DNA. So, ideally, there should be different restriction sites present for different enzymes and only one site so ideally only single site should be present for each enzyme this enzyme could be BAM H1 or ECO R1. Only a single site should, should be present. There should not be multiple sites for the same enzyme. Now, there is a phenomena which is known as insertional inactivation. Insertional inactivation. What does it mean? Now, we have already discussed that selectable markers, they are used to identify the transformants. So, for example, this is the gene for tetracycline resistance. This is the gene for tetracycline resistance. Okay, so when I introduce my recombinant DNA, recombinant DNA will be added here. So the addition of my recombinant DNA will inactivate this gene, will inactivate this gene. And now this bacterium has lost its resistance against tetracycline so now the transformant the transformant transformant is not tetracycline resistant so when this will be grown on a medium containing tetracycline the non transformants will be able to grow but this transformant will not be able to grow on the medium containing tetracycline and therefore it can be used as a selectable marker so insertional activation means insertional activation means 
inactivation of the gene encoding for a trait for a particular trait now selection of transformants and non transformants based on antibiotic resistance is a very cumbersome and tiresome procedure because you have to apply different antibiotics so an alternative selectable marker has been developed which is dependent an alternative selectable marker selectable marker dependent on dependent on production of an enzyme beta galactosidase has been developed so when beta galactosidase is present then in the presence of a substrate color is produced substrate in the presence of beta galactosidase will produce color this is a this will be a chromogenic substrate chromogenic means which has the ability to produce color so the enzyme will act on this substrate and color will be produced so if i add my recombinant dna into the gene that is encoding for beta galactosidase so my recombinant dna is added to the gene encoding for beta galactosidase there will be insertional inactivation of the gene and this color production will stop so my transformants will not produce color and my trans and non transformants will continue to produce colors so it will be used it can be used as a selectable marker now selection of vector depends upon first the size of desired gene if the gene is large the large vector is needed and type of host and type of host so some examples of vectors first of all we have plasmids plasmids these are double stranded circular extra chromosomal dna segments which can replicate independent of chromosomal dna there is a correction previously i have said that plasmids are single stranded so the correction is that plasmids are double stranded they have two strands they are not single stranded plasmids are double stranded please make that correction now when these are taken out of the bacteria and made to combine with the desired dna segments by means of restriction enzyme and dna ligase so a recombinant plasmid is produced so recombinant plasmid or a hybrid plasmid what it, what it is also called as chimeric plasmid it means it means foreign dna has been added foreign dna has been added to this plasmid examples examples most important pbr 322 puc 18 ti plasmid ri plasmid these are used for bacteria in gene transfer in bacteria and these are used for gene transfer in dicot plants in dicot plants
so this is an example of a plasmid this is pbr322 pbr322 it is a plasmid in e coli it is a plasmid of e coli so these are the restriction sites for hind 3 bam h1 cell 1 pu pvu second psg1 pvu1 equar1 cla1 you have to remember these sites in the order in which they are given either clockwise or anti clockwise in order you have to remember because there may be a question based on the order these are the genes for antibiotic resistance so if i add my recombinant dna into these sites there will be insertional inactivation and the plasmid will lose its capacity to produce these genes to produce tetracycline resistance and the bacteria will lose its resistance against tetracycline now there is a special bacterium known as agrobacterium tumefaciens its ti plasmid its ti plasmid is used for gene transfer in plants it basically causes uh, tumor disease in plants so the tumor producing ability of this plasmid is removed and it can be used as a vector in plants and there are a lot of viruses that can act as vectors special example lambda phage lambda phage it has been used for transferring lac genes for transfer of lac genes in e coli they have been used and retroviruses retroviruses they are used in animal cells for gene transfer in animal cells now the vector type is decided by the recombinant dna size that we require so plasmids are used for size of the insert or the fragment up to 0.5 to 8 kilo base pairs bacteriophage lambda for 9 to 23 kilo base pairs cosmid for 30 to 45 base kilo base pairs bacterial artificial chromosome for 50 to 300 and yeast artificial chromosome for 1000 to 2500 so these two are used in human cells and animal cells because they can accommodate very large inserts inserts and these are used in lower group of animals now synthetic dna uh, it is synthesized with the help of dna polymerase synthesized with the help of DNA polymerase in vitro in vitro on a DNA template Kornberg scientist named Kornberg in 1961 synthesized first synthetic dna then khurana in 1968 synthesized synthesized artificial gene synthesized artificial gene without a dna template without a dna template but this gene was unfortunately non-functional so in 1979 he was able to synthesize a functional gene without dna template 
so with this we finish off with our discussion on cloning vectors see you in next video